Hello YouTube, Shizny Gaming here. Today, we're going to be looking into docking. Yes, I know a lot of people have problems with this, so I figured make a quick little tutorial, right? I mean, I did a video where me and a couple friends mucked around, we docked, and I believe that's really loud. Uh, already put that at 10. Okay, so, we're going to look at docking, and uh, we're... Yeah, I did a video where I was doing a docking, but I didn't really do a tutorial. I was just mucking around. A couple of friends were on TeamSpeak. It got really, really, uh, <laughs> parental guidance as advised, you know. But, uh, we're going to do this. So we're actually going to start a new one, right? We're going to do it in, uh, Sandbox. We'll just call this one Tutorials. Now, the flag. I do have a couple of mods installed. I will explain them as as I go. Nothing that I'm not going to, I'm going to use stock parts, so. All stock parts. We'll do rocket science. And we will start. So the first thing we will see, now this will be a bit lengthy, I'm just going to warn you now, it's not going to be a quick thing, because I mean, as I face E10 FPS at first, there we go, it's not a quick thing to dock. I mean, I'd like to tell you it's quick and easy, it's not, it's it's a hassle, especially when you're new to it, I mean, I got, I actually made it to EVE before I ma managed to dock, so, you know, that's just how it is. So first things first, we're going to go, uh... We're in Sandbox, right? So we're going to go to the VAB. Now, currently, the only mods that are going to affect me are Ferrum Aerospace Research. Now, what this mod does is adds a realistic aerodynamic simulation, so I'm going to have to keep my aerodynamics in check, and I'm going to do a launch differently. So I'm not going to focus on the launch. I'm not going to focus on uh, getting into space. I'm only going to focus on space maneuvers. So first things first, we're going to build and uh, launch the first vehicle. We're going to put something in, in orbit. That's going to be just what we're going to dock to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up because you all don't need to be watching this. So, enjoy the music, and we're off. And we are back. So we are in orbit. I I sped that up. I'm not sure what audio track I'm using, but it'll probably be royalty free music. What with the new uh, copyright worries and whatnot. I know some of my older videos. Yes, they have music that infringes on that. I apologize. I'm a terrible person, but you know what? It's good music, right? I mean, I don't know. And I don't want to get too much into this, but in my opinion, I think it's it's a good thing, or in in a way, it's a good thing if people use. Uh, other people's music for their works if they give credit where credit is due. I mean, you know, with that, you can easily, easily get, you know, people known who might not otherwise be known. I mean, a lot of small-time people, like, we all know who Jason Derulo is. We all know who Justin Bieber is, right? We, we know who they are because mainstream media, you know, shows them everywhere. But the, what about the other people, like, you know, Blue Stally and Pendulum and, you know, Limp Bizkit and stuff like that? People, they're the ones that people aren't so familiar with. 
you know, it's people like that who really benefit from their music being used because then you, know, you come across a video and you like the music you're like oh that's really good you know who who did that and you find out who was you know knife party and you go oh cool i'm gonna look up that other stuff you like them and you're like oh cool i want to buy their albums and there you go someone's you know <laughs> use of their music got them an album purchased right it's little things like that but for the sake of legalities i'll be using the royalty free music so on that i am now going to be uh launching the second ship now I'm going to build the second ship uh, probably in real time and then I'm going to launch it is sped up again because launches are very different for me than you know people without uh, FAR and uh, yeah so let's get to that so we're going to go back to the space center alrighty so we're back at the space center and I'm going to probably have to stop talking when it black screens like that because as far as I know it actually cuts off uh, my audio or my recording program cuts off my audio when I do that now we're gonna go we're gonna go new here and uh, there's something okay well there's one plugin that I will be using uh, pretty heavily here and it's not adding any parts it's actually an information thing it's RCS build aid this thing is so useful I I cannot stress how useful this is so okay so we're gonna build ourselves a it's like docking ship here, right? It's gonna have your control wheel, it's gonna have your fuels, right, etc. etc. Using stock parts. Yeah, that's a bit big of a fuel tank for RCS for one docking. I'm gonna put you there. Uh what else could we put? We could put oh, I guess we'll just put another poodle engine because it's fairly efficient. And we're gonna put on some solar panels. Solar panels. We're basically gonna copy the other one. I don't know why I didn't just build off of that other one, but hey, you know what? Right, what happens, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add on our RCS fuel tanks. And you can see right now, I've got two center of mass uh, orbs. And, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, what the heck are those? Those, my friends, are center of mass is yellow and dry center of mass, which is red. And this green line shows my engine th uh, th reaction versus where the thrust is coming from. And these informations are what the game should tell you, but doesn't. And this plugin gives you this information. Now this is an old version of RCS building, I'm pretty sure I need to update it, but version 0.4.5 as I have it shows really critical things. It shows RCS uh, pushing, so we're going to reference the center mass because we're not going to use much fuel in this, as we've seen. We're going to use the place anywhere dock RCS ports, and you can see I'm now getting more information. I'm getting where the RCS pushes, and I'm getting where I'm reacting in this red circle. This shows that I'm actually going to get a turning torque in this direction if I try and translate left. So if I play this other one here, I can zero it out by just shifting these things around and once it's zero kilonewton M, I don't know what the M stands for, I'll have to look into that, or at least 0 0.1, it'll be so negligible that SAS will just cancel it out. In fact, I believe I've got a leeway of up to, I think it's like 0.20, but after that of course you start to find your SAS wheel doesn't do much. Oh, there we go, zeroed out. So even without SAS, this would push just fine and dandy if we didn't use any fuel. Now, this is excellent because for those of you who, who don't want to put just a single set of docking, or a single set of RCS things, you can now place multiple, and you'll know if it's balanced. And you see, I can just, z oh, I guess, close enough to zero them right out, and look at that. Now we've got 10 kilonewtons of RCS push to easily get us docked. I mean, easily. Now, dry center mass, this one's useful for especially space planes. God, it's useful. Because you can zero the, the uh, dry center mass out. In fact, you can look here, it says the DCOM offset. This is how offset this is. So if you're building a space plane, you need that balanced. Well, you can set that so that if you emptied all your fuel, it would still, the center mass would be right there. So you know you could glide. It's so useful. Engine, now this is good if you want to know your thrust to weight ratio and your rotational torque. Same thing with space planes. We know how they're not uh, radially symmetric, they're bilateral uh, symmetry. So you've got wings on either side, but nothing on top or bottom. So your engine sometimes creates a weird torque. Or if you're trying to launch a space shuttle, uh, so you got your big engine tank out here and you got your uh, rocket plane behind it, you know, that can be kind of weird too. You can balance it with this. And I mean, it's unbelievable how useful this plugin is of all of them. I would suggest at least getting this because it helps with orbital things. Now, it doesn't add any parts, doesn't do anything for you, it just gives you information. If you did not have this plugin and if you're the kind of person who does not do plugins, then you could just 
do the single uh, RCS ports on the center massing. That's it's all good, right? It's all cool. I mean, it'll be a bit slower, but you know, it's all fine and dandy. So we're gonna build a similar launch vehicle. Now we're gonna place on these big decouplers, and propulsion will be a jumbo 64 tank with an X32 tank with a mainsail engine underneath that. God, I've been playing this for so long. I pretty much memorized every single part, all its specs and everything, except the new parts on the 0.23.5 update, which I'm still waiting for 0.24. I want contracts. I want contracts. Okay, so we're gonna go structural. We're gonna grab ourselves some hydraulic detachment manifolds. We're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves a couple of boosters. Now I could be using the S1 SRB KD 25K, the, the new the new boosters added in the arm update. But look at those, those are just ridiculous. I mean, unless I'm launching a space shuttle where I need these to haul an, a tank with no engine, I'm not using them. <laughs> no thank you. I will stick with my Rockamax back solid fuel boosters. There we go. So those work. Aerodynamics, because I can keep those in mind using vanilla parts. Aerodynamic nose cones. Now there's one thing I don't quite appreciate added into uh, the new FAR, uh, Faram Aerospace. It's the uh, aerodynamic, or like the uh, failures due to aerodynamic stresses. Basically, if air pressure pushes too hard on, say, a part like this solar panel, if I'm going too fast through the atmosphere, this thing will just rip right off, and it'll fail due to aerodynamic stress. Realistic, yes. I absolutely love the realism in it. However, it's pretty annoying, you know, because you got to, like, do launches several times if you mess up or if something's not quite aerodynamic. Oops, sorry, that's not the vanilla one. That is the vanilla one. If you don't do something right, you mess up, you lose your bits, and that's never useful. Okay, so we've got stuff there, yep. Yeah. We're going to need... Oh, I need it. Aerodynamic. Getting too distracted talking. Oh, yes. As is life. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and put these... Like so, and then put these ones like so. That works. Put you there, you there, you you discouple there, decouple, discouple, whatever. Now, do note that decouplers are still kind of weak. For a vehicle like this, it doesn't matter. It's it's not big enough for it to matter. But for a larger vehicle, these decouplers become kind of wobbly. Even with the new updates with structural enhancements, they left these ones weakened. Just I mean, in real life, right, that's the weakest part of your rocket is, is the decoupler. What I found, especially with FAR, I mean, this plays really nice with FAR. If you need to strengthen, put these things and put a strut between them. The aerodynamic shape helps FAR to, you know, not really care about these. And, in my opinion, it looks pretty cool. Especially when you got things linked. But, of course, I don't need them, so I'm not going to use them. But just a little pro tip, right, for the future. Now, you can also hold shift and scroll to zoom out and in. And you notice me, I'm all over the place. I'm looking everywhere. And that's because it's just good to get different angle views of your rocket. It's just nice. Now, one more thing about this RCS build aid is if you go into engine, you can see your thrust to weight ratio. If it's greater than one, you'll get you'll lift off the ground. If it's like two, you'll lift off pretty quickly. If it's three, you're gonna go pretty darn fast. If it's ten, your rock is probably gonna crumble under its own acceleration forces. Now what is thrust to weight ratio? For those of you who might be new to the game, might not know. The thrust-to-weight ratio is basically, it's based on the uh, gravity of Earth. Earth, or sorry, Kerbin, uh, its gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, that's, an, that's acceleration, right? It's as if there was a rocket constantly pushing down on you with that acceleration. Which means that you need to accelerate this rocket at at least 9.81 meters per second squared to counteract gravity, which is a thrust-to-weight ratio of 1, right? Thrust -weight. You can figure it from there. Which means that you basically, if you're accelerating at approximately 20 meters a second squared in space, you'll be accelerating at about 9 meters a second squared, lifting off of, or going straight away from Kerbin. I mean, just, uh, I don't know how to explain it really. Uh, there's a lot of Wikipedia pages and stuff on it I, you know, I read about, and it's quite confusing, but quite interesting too. Okay, let's, let's just shut up and launch. <laughs> I'm not going to name this one because it's virtually identical to them. Okay, on the launch pad. I don't know if my audio cut out on that black screen. I hope it didn't, but uh, we're going to launch. It's a beautiful day to launch. 
clouds are up in the sky, particle replacer is functional. Let's launch. we are back and in orbit. So, you may notice here's my vehicle right docking to our mothership and here is my orbit. Now my orbit is bigger than the orbit of the mothership. Now I only did this because it's uh it's in such a low orbit. Uh, if you're in a much higher orbit like say you're up you know, halfway to the moon here, which is my one of my favoriteest orbit <laughs> favoriteest one of, one of the best orbits in my opinion to be if you're going to do like moon missions because from here when you jump to the moon Normally, if you're down here and you jump to the moon, you get a little window of opportunity to circularize and whatnot. You're a pretty big velocity difference. But if you're out here and you jump to the moon, you get a much longer time spent in the moon. You can spend a, just a little bit of delta V to circularize, and it's so nice to relay up and down. But anyways, we are here, and this is our mothership. Now, the first things first, we need to be able to rendezvous. So this will be a rendezvous slash docking tutorial. And like I said, it's going to be lengthy. I, I apologize, but sit down, grab yourself a drink, and... Follow along if you're so inclined. So we're going to use select you as a target. Now with the new update, it might be because of my cocktail of mods, or it might be because of something, but occasionally I can't, you know, select it as a target. I'll click on it, click on it, it won't do anything. I just F5 to quick save and hold F9 to quick load, and all's well. So what you'll see, we'll instantly get this thing will go green. We'll get an AP for the for the other ship, which is new. I've never seen that before, or at least I never noticed it. We'll get a DN and an AN. What do these mean? Well, our inclinations are slightly different, so you can imagine it sort of like if two things were sitting right next to each other, they'd sort of be like up and down and up and down, like, uh, oh, how can I explain Like pistons in a vehicle engine, right? Just up and down relative to each other. Well, we, don't, we want to make sure that we're in the same plane, if that makes sense. I apologize, I'm terrible at this, but DN is a descending node. This basically means we're going to cross this line headed downwards. So we want to, at this point, push upwards to line ourselves up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to warp ahead. And I have warp unlockers, so I warp a little bit faster. Uh, it's a great mod to get. Just make sure you, you uh, get the one where it maintains uh, altitude limits. Because the uh, traditional warp unlocker, it does not have altitude limits. So you go ripping right through planets. It's quite irritating, to be honest. But it's great if you want to go to Jewel. It adds so many more factors. Because at this point... Sorry, you're going to go to the north point on your uh, nav ball, and you're just going to accelerate uh, slowly until you get zeroed out. If you can get NAN, oh, just had there for a minute. Okay, is zero or NAN? Both of those are just as good. Oh, trying not to mess up here. Okay, so we've, we've now circularized. We're in the same plane, right? We're orbiting the same plane. However, we're still not going to really run into each other because we're in different orbits. But this is important to do. You see, what you need to be, you, what you need to do is you need to be able to uh, get into its orbital area at the same time as it's going to be there. Now, if this is in a lower orbit, it's going faster. If you're in a higher orbit, it's going slower. So if I remember correctly, you want this one to be just behind you when you slow down. Now, this might sound confusing, but just go ahead and warp right, and you'll see it's getting closer to me. Now, when it gets, say, well, I don't know, a few orbits in there. Okay, so we're going to slow down to 1, and just a little bit ahead, we're going to create a maneuver node. 
We're going to drag this till it brings slowly down into the other orbit. There we go. Oh, you can see we've lined up nicely. So you can approximate, right? And you can drag this around. You can play with it. And as a new feature of 0 0.23, 0 0.5, you can right-click the white ball in the middle, and you get these two buttons, plus one orbit, minus one orbit. So we plus one orbit. If I waited one more orbit, that would be our difference. We go back in orbit, and this will be our difference. Right? So six kilometers. That's good. I mean, anywhere in the ballpark of, like, <laughs> heck, even up to 20 is pretty darn good. Now if you're one of those people like me who is very very finicky about this, oops, you can you can play around with this. You can muck around, you can drag this around a little, and you can fine tune it down as, as close as you want. Me, I'm a little bit, you know, finicky, OCD, whatever you want to call it. There we go, 0 0.2 kilometers, I like that. Now it's never going to be that when you do the burn, because we're, we're only human, right? Our burns are only so accurate. So you can see it burns a is the, oh, it's approximately 20 seconds, so halfway through 10 seconds, we're going to do the burn. That's just due to the way these maneuver nodes work. Traditionally, maneuver nodes operate on the idea that you're instantly going to get this uh, change in velocity. Realistically, that's not an option. We don't instantly change velocity. Not yet, anyways. So, we're going to have to you know go half and half. Half before, half after. And that just helps to clean things up a little. And a quick save because maneuver nodes are now persistent, so if we mess up, we can just reload and try it again. I'm going to carefully. Oh, perfect. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and for 10 seconds do this burn. Now, accuracy, like I said, is not too terribly critical. We want it in the ballpark of. But I mean, look. Now 1.3 kilometers. Like I said, anything around, like, un less than 20 kilometers, you're golden. You're good. If you're getting, like, 200 kilometer differences, that's not exactly a good thing. Okay, so we've done this, right? We're now headed towards this thing. When I first started playing, I, I always was under the impression if I accelerate downwards towards the planet, I'll line up with this thing, so I'll head towards the planet and hit this thing, but really... That's not the case, and there's a bunch of math on that, but that just, that just does not work. Well, not efficiently, I should say. It will work if you push hard enough, but not in the way you want. So we've just done it really efficiently. Unfortunately, this means we're docking on the dark side, and... Ah, yeah, the dark side. This is going to make it problematic because, guess what? No lights! This is why it's good to have lights. If you don't like this, what you can do is you can wait and then put your maneuver node up here so that you'll end up meeting in the light side, but I think we'll be okay in the dark, in the dark side. I don't know how dark it'll be on the video. I hope it's not going to be too terribly dark. Quick save again. Quick save your best friend. Trust me, it, it really is. So we're going to go ahead and carefully warp down to where we're going to intersect approximately towards. So you can see we're getting close and that vehicle's coming closer. And you see it'll change from orbit to target. Now this is all relative to our target, and this is good, this is what we want. So we're going to slow down right about here. Oops, ooh. Oh, oh, gee, we're ripping right past it. Okay, this happens. It's okay. The nodes sometimes give us funny information. And even though we're, we're just passing right by it, calm down, it's all good. We'll, we'll just meet up with it again. We just need to get close enough to it so that we can then start lining things up. I'm just going to go ahead and burn on that retrograde because that'll kill out our relative velocity. Relative velocity is how quickly you're moving compared to the target, not compared to your orbit. So we're going to zero that out and then we're going to go on this marker. It's like a dot with four lines around it. And I'm kind of blinder now. I really should be wearing my glasses, but I'm not. Alright, so we're going to burn towards it now. Now, there's two ways to go about this. You can do it, you know, vanilla for those of you who don't do who don't do plugins, and really this would require my glasses. I might have to go grab them. However, there's also something called the docking alignment indicator. Now, it's by Navy Fish, and it is another information mod that is so useful. It gives you a information panel. I'll probably dis I'll show it when you know, we get close enough, and it tells you your relative rotation. So basically, you know, if you're oriented correctly to dock, if you're lined up correctly to dock, like, you know, in the X, Y, Z coordinates, and then it shows your relative velocity towards the docking port and uh, rotation. So if you want it to be you know, rotated at a 36.9 degree angle, you could do so. 
So we're going to go ahead and just time warp, and like I said, quick save your best friend, right? So, yeah, you notice, because we're traveling around an orbital body, we're, because we're orbiting, uh, just going towards it's not going to be good enough. We're going to go off alignment here every so often. So you just burn, right? Remember that your prograde marker will always try and go to your towards your orange marker. So we're just going to use that little effect to tug that towards here, and just generally there. I mean, we're just coasting towards it. Now I think we'll be good, so we're going to rotate over towards retrograde velocity just to be prepared. And the retrograde, it skitters away from your orange marker, so you can use that effect too to get a little more accuracy, right? But we're going to keep this in mind because when we get to about 100 meters out, we're going to want to kill these and then switch over to RCS. Quick save because it's your friend. Right, 200 meters, 100 meters, and there. And we're going to kill at a relative velocity. Now, what I think I'll do actually is we are on the dark side, and you might actually have a problem seeing this. I don't know. I, and I don't want to have to make another one of these episodes. So we're going to go ahead and just sort of coast towards the light side. You can see it's going away from us, but that's okay. We can do what we did before and burn towards it. Now we're on the light side. Now, some of you might like the more cinematic style view of uh, playing the game. And if you want that, a great way to go about it. I mean, a beautiful way. Just press V on the keyboard and it'll put your camera, put it into free mode. And now you can see you're, you're like, I don't know how to describe it. You're, uh, above the earth, you know? You really feel like you're above the planet or orbiting a planet like the ISS, the International Space Station. However, let's not get too distracted here because, although this is beautiful, I really should just take a thumbnail here. Oh, there we go. One, two, three, four times V will put you back to your original and helps to reset if you move your camera. Okay, as we're getting close, we're going to want to kill at this relative velocity here. This is why you want to keep things slow. You want to be very slow about this, like slow as a turtle, because it's the safest way to do it. In fact, as, for as slow as this feels, it's not as slow as the International Space Station. Uh, just to give you a time frame idea, I believe it took, oh, what was it, uh, the space shuttle? Uh, I don't know, there was one shuttle system that they had to get crew and materials up to the station, and it takes about three days orbiting to get to this uh to get to the station really because they have to go so slowly to make darn certain they don't crash into the station and kill everyone, right? Okay, so F five one last time here. This is about the last time you want to F five, so we're gonna look at this right and that's oriented backwards. We're gonna press right bracket, not the parentheses, the actual bracket, the square bracket. We're gonna go to this vehicle. Now it's gonna give us uh, auto camera right and we're just gonna go ahead and open our shielded docking port here. We're going to go ahead and rotate around until we're more or less facing the other the other vehicle. Oops. There we go. Now press the bracket again. And this will put us... Okay, so the camera modes are persistent too. Okay, so we're going to right click on that docking port. Set as target. Now this window popped up for me. It won't for you unless you've got the Navy Fish docking alignment indicator. This is what I was talking about. It shows your orientation, rotation, and your current uh, relative velocity, your heading, and your position. Now, I'm not going to use this, so I'm going to just drag and hide this. That's about as far as it will go. Can I just... No, okay. So, we're just going to put that away from... Oops, not there. Ah, we're going to hide this. Thing. There, we go. there we go. That that works. So, you can see we've got our target right, and we can actually open this shield here. It's a bad thing if you don't open the shield. Bad things happen. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just, I suppose, guess really whereabouts that is. Turn on our RCS, H to accelerate, and then the I, J, K, and L keys translate. Now thankfully, because of our excellent balancing in the, in the VAB, this is going to be relatively easy. Now, I wouldn't say, I would say dock it no more than like 0.8 meters a second to a meter a second. It's slow, yes, it might be painfully slow, but it's safe, and too many dockings of mine have been lost because I've been impatient and gone at 10 meters a second. It's, it's terrible. If you're really that inclined, you can warp. But I wouldn't warp too much because when you do warp, you actually lose physics, and you'll pass right through your vehicle, and if you panic and unwarp during said, you know, phase of thing, you'll blow up.
really. That's about it. Okay, so we've got all these lined up. Why are these lined up? Because the target is our docking port. We want our velocity to be headed towards the docking port. We want to be facing the docking port. We're going to slow down. So I can explain this because this is a tutorial. I need to explain this. Now, we want to keep these three lined up. If they're lined up and we're going slow enough, we're probably going to do it. Now, some bits you might have to eyeball. Like, okay, if I can slow down a little. Right, so I'm going to actually move upwards a little. And I'm going to push myself down. There. Okay, and I'm going to look forwards at it. We seem to be good lined up that way. So we're going to go ahead and go like so. And if you're really that inclined to know little tricks and things, the prograde marker will push your pink thing away from wherever it's facing. Okay, so we're going to get close and magnets will engage. And we've docked. I'm really hoping I didn't miss anything in the said docking. Uh, really, I mean, we translate, keep everything lined up. And even if you came in at like a 45 degree angle, if you're really careful about it, and you slowly came in, the magnets could pull you in if you're small enough. Uh, if you've got really big ships, it might take a lot longer. And if you start doing the whole wobbling, skittering, sliding on the docking port thing, don't panic. Just turn your uh, SAS on, and then let it calm you, calm you down, then try again. And if you find that you push the other vehicle and it starts to spin, just, I don't know, time warp, it'll kill out its physics. So, we've got a couple of fuel tanks here, right, and both of these need to be refueled and all, and uh, so we can, you know, alt right click when we've got one highlighted, and it'll give us options, right? So we're gonna pull liquid fuel in and oxidizer in. Don't try and cut these halfway through if you can avoid it, because uh, you know they run on specific ratios, and you don't want to have liquid fuel and no oxidizer. It's really quite messy for everything. If you want to do small portions, I suggest taking uh, just strapping on a little fuel tank and then emptying it in the VAB before you go up. This way you can portion out small amounts and keep the ratios uh, you know, even. But I mean, usually just fill it up completely. Or even if it doesn't fill up completely, you'll even if you drain this 100% and there's still like little bits of space here, you know there's still it's still even. Anyways, I hope this helped. Uh you know, I'll I'll leave uh you know music names or whatever in just in the uh ending here, in the credits as it were. If you need or if you need no, if you would like to see any other tutorials or demonstrations or anything like that in Kerbal Space Program, feel free to drop me a like and a comment or whatever the heck you please. I mean subscribe if you wanted to. It's it's all your call. But I would love to help people out and I'd love to, you know just to really Help the new players along with things that normally took me about a month and a half to figure out on my own. <laughs> also, check out Scott Manley's videos if you know you, if you like. I mean, his videos are excellent for uh, you know demonstrating things. I mean, without his videos, I probably would still be you know trying not to you know fail getting into orbit. So, thank you for watching. This has been Shizna Gaming. Stay tuned.